in form of examples. One, two, Hello. 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 Can you please make your examples a bit similar to yesterday's work? So that at least I can get some. All right. One, one, whole squared theta plus three sine squared theta is equal to three minus two cos squared theta. So I want to prove that these are equal. So let's pick the left hand side, the one that looks complicated. So you can see on the right, we only have cos. This means that using the most important identity, we must change sine squared to one minus cos squared. When you expand this, we get cos squared theta plus three from three times one, we get three. Three times negative cos squared, we have minus three cos squared, but this will give us three as a constant. Then cos squared minus three cos squared, we get minus two cos squared theta. End of proof. So in case you had forgotten, this is equal to one. Is one we are referring to as the most important identity. If you don't know that identity in trigonometry, then you have issues. Another one. Cos 2x over cos x minus sine x should be the same as cos x plus sine x. Again, the left hand side cos 2x over cos x minus sine x. Now I remind you, cos a plus b is the same as cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. So if a is the same as b, what you would notice is that cos A plus A will be cos A, cos A minus sine A, sine A. If you add A plus A, you get to A. Cos times cos, you get cos squared A. And sine times sine, we get sine squared A. So I was driving the identity to be used for the numerator. So cos 2A is the same as cos squared X. I mean, cos 2X, the same as cos squared X minus sine squared X. Everything over cos X minus sine X. The good news is that the numerator is a difference of two squares. So you can use that fact, minus sine x, 
multiplied by cos x plus sin x divided by cos x minus sin x. So this piece and this piece cancels. So we get cos x plus sin x. If there's no question, we can have another one, sine two X over one minus cos two X is the same as cot X, interesting. Left hand side, Sine two x is the same as two sine x cos x. You can drive it using this very formula in terms of sine over one minus open cos two x. Just known that it is the same as cos x minus sine squared x. This is the same as two sine x uh, cos x over, we expand, we'll get one minus cos squared x plus sine squared x. So this is the same as two uh, sine x uh, cos x over one minus cos squared x from this guy here we know it is sine x it's sine squared x so we we'll have sine squared x plus sine squared x we we'll have two sine squared x so the two cancel and so we we'll have the sine canceling this power so we have cos x over sin x, which is equal to cot x, the right hand side. Sir. Hello. Yeah, like uh... Comparing B and C, there's B is cos 2x, then C is sine 2x. Now, like, why on C you have put two behind the uh, sine x and cos x, whereas on B, you just, you didn't it. But how is it different? Sine A plus B, is sine A cos B plus sine B cos A. So if A is the same as B, sine A plus A, we we'll have sine A cos A plus sine A cos A. But these two are the same, so you can add them and get two sine A cos A. That's the reason why that guy is equal to this one. Okay. Yes. So the question is that you must not forget the identities that we listed some time back. The listing was so that you could use them when you meet these identities. All right, I understood. Okay. So with yeah. this, you know. Hi. Good. 
pupito on, on the sea. On sea? Okay, so I'll just copy. Lombe. Okay, so we have already done for the numerator, is it? In the repeat, sine 2x is the same as 2 sine x cos x as an identity. And for the denominator, we have 1 minus cos 2x. Cos 2x, we've seen that in B, it is the same as this piece here cos squared x minus sine squared x. So we substitute where this cos 2x, we substitute cos squared x minus sine squared x. And then there's a minus outside the bracket, so we can expand. We we'll have one minus cos squared x, negative times negative, we get plus. So we're saying negative times negative, we get plus sine squared x. Now one minus cos squared x from the most important identity, if you take sine the other side, I mean, if you take cos the other side, you have sine squared is equal to one minus cos squared. So one minus cos squared is the same as sine squared x. So this sine squared x that is here, plus this sine squared x, we get two, sine squared x. So we have two sine x cos x over two sine squared x. Now the two will cancel. We have sine squared x cos x over sine squared x. Meaning we have sine x cos x over sine squared x. Being sine squared means we have sine multiplied by sine. So one of the sine will cancel the sine on top and remain is cos over sine. But cos over sine is cot, which is what we have as a right hand side. So, so I have a question. Okay. Where is the one going which is on the denominator? Where is the one going in the denominator? This whole thing is equal to sine squared x from here. Is it okay? Oh, sorry, it's fine. I didn't see that. I didn't see that the negative is multiplying the whole thing because right. squared x minus sine. Okay, so this was question one. Let's bring in question two. Solve for x. One, sine, hello. Sign. Hello? Sir, the questions were from solving uh, uh, like the ones from yesterday. The ones we are from solving, yes. Uh, all right, thank you. Okay. Sir, hello. Yeah, I want to identify identity. Like okay. it says. Well, I'm asking so, for the previous ones. So, so keep that changing identity. After question, mm. after question two, we'll go for it. All right. Okay. So. So for x, uh, for values of x ranging from zero less or equal to x, less or equal to 360 degrees, of course. So how you know 
which form you should present your answer. If the interval is given in degrees, you present your answer in degrees. If the interval is given in radians, you present your answer in radians. So this interval is given in degrees. So our answers will be given in degrees. One, sine 2x is equal to half. The thing that you do here first is, if this x that is here is being multiplied by anything here, you let the whole thing to be another variable. Say theta is equal to x, and then get back and substitute theta there is equal to half. Then go back to your special angles and check which of the special angles gives you half for sine. You find out that theta is equal to 30 because sine 30 is equal to half. How do you know? It's a special angle. And we have the special angle table. We have the special triangles for special angles. So you choose any of the two to use, it will remind you that the theta that gives you half for sine is 30 in the first quadrant, of course, but sine is also positive in the second quadrant. So you take 30 as a reference angle. And so you go in the second quadrant and look for an angle whose reference is 30. That means in the second quadrant, we are going to have theta be equal to 180 minus 30, which is equal to 150. Okay. Now look, the interval given is from 0 to 360. So far, theta, we know theta is 2x. So where there is theta, we substitute 2x because our question is about x not what we have introduced. So we go back and substitute 2x is equal to 30. Divide by two, divide by two, x is equal to 15 degrees. The second one, 2x is equal to 150. Divide by two, divide by two. So x is equal to 75 degrees. It looks like there are still other values of x. Um, there are still other values of theta that when divided by two will fall within zero and 360, though initially they are beyond 360. Because within zero and 360, we only have 30 and 150. Now we remember that we did coterminal angles. So we know 30 is in the first quadrant. This guy here is 30, but it has a coterminal angle, which starts from here, go around and end here. And this angle is 30 plus 360, which is 390. It is called a coterminal angle to 30. So if theta is 390, you notice that if we let this to be equal to 2x, when we divide by 2, we are going to find 2 into 3, 1, remainder 1, 2 into 19, 8, remainder 1, 2 into 10, 5. This x is within the required interval. Though the theta was beyond, but that it's supposed to be two into nineteen. It is supposed to be nine. Ah, nine. Yes, you're right. Uh, it's one ninety-five. One ninety-five degrees. Okay. So, so please, hello. So, before you go any further, uh, can you just explain why it's three ninety again? So we are looking for a coterminal angle of 30. And the coterminal angle of 30 is an angle 
that starts at the same point as 30 and ends at the same point as 30. So if we go for the positive ones, because our interval is positive, we will be adding 360 to 30. So 360 plus 30, you get 390, which is coterminal to 30. Remember the properties of coterminal angles, they share same starting point, same end point. Second, they have same properties, meaning they give you the same value for any trig function. So, Hello. I don't understand why uh, you're getting all these values. I, I thought you, you just need to find one value of x. Uh -uh. You don't just find one value of x. We said for sine, we're dealing with sine, it is positive here, it's positive here. So since half is positive, we have two angles that gives us half. The one from here, another one from here. So we follow all the two quadrants for us to obtain 30 and 150. Now we're supposed to end here, but the challenge we're having is that the interval given for theta is from zero to 360. I mean, for X. So it's possible that theta can be beyond 360, but when we go to X, we must divide theta by two to have X. So we can go beyond 360 and still find X within the required interval. So now we have gone for the coterminal angles for these two angles. Oh, sorry, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, after finding the value, values of X, Benny, what did you do like for you to get 390 today? For us to get 390, we have gone to look for the coterminal angle of 30. How do you find the coterminal angles? You add or subtract 360. So since I'm having a 30, I'll add 360 for me to get the coterminal of 30. Is that okay? Okay, okay, all right, okay. So if we added 360 to 390 and divide by two, what we'll get, let's try, we go for another coterminal. You start from here, all the way up to here, this is 390. You go again, up to here, meaning, 390 plus 360. We'll have 0, 5, 750 as theta. So theta is 750, meaning that 2x is 750. We divide by 2, we divide by 2. We're looking for X. Let's see if it will fall within zero and 360. Seven, I mean, two into seven, three, remainder one, two into 15, seven. So we have 375. This number is beyond 360. So it's not needed. So there's no need of another coterminal for this case. So we remove it. So, forget about it. Hello? Why are you adding 390 to 360 when you didn't add 150 to 360? We haven't gone to 150. We are still dealing with 30. Still dealing with 30. So we are still looking for the coterminal yeah. angles of 30. So you so said. So you, at first you say 30 plus 360? 
Yes. Then the answer that you find again, you add 360. Yes. You just continue you, adding 360. You just continue okay. adding 360 because that's a full circle. Because that's a full circle. All right. Uh, so I'm asking for the previous board. I just want to take a screenshot. I came in late. Thank you, sir. Hope you understand these words. So we are done with 30. We got 150. 150 is an angle from here up to there. This is 150. Uh, yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you put uh, 190, I mean 195 on the on X, it's not giving like when you say sign 195, it's not giving uh, half. Why? I don't know. It's on the calculator, I tried. <clears throat> okay, so it means that ah no 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 no. You don't put it as as. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think I have I have gotten it. It's uh, one times two. 195 times two years. All right. Okay. So let's go for another cotemino angle for 150. So we have from 30. Now we want to look for a cotemino angle for 150 and see if when divided by two, will be within zero and 360. So we'll start from here, all the way up to here, meaning we have 150 plus. 360. What do we get? 0, 11, 5. So theta is 5, 10. So if it is 2x, the 5, 10, we divide by 2, divide by 2. So x is equal to 2, remainder 1. Five remainder one five. So we have two fifty-five degrees. It falls within the interval zero and three sixty. So x is equal to fifteen degrees. X is equal to seventy-five degrees. X is equal to one ninety-five. And x is equal to 255 degrees. These are the solutions. Any question? So I haven't understood clearly how you got the 255. Just a quick recap. You divide 510 by 2. Where do we get 510? It's a reference, it's a coterminal angle of 150. So you add 150 plus 360. So when you are adding 150 plus 350, I mean plus 360, you are getting theta. But theta is equal to 2x. So if you have theta and you're looking for x, you equate them. Theta is equal to 2x. So 2x is equal to 510, which is our theta. And then divide by 2 for us to get x. No, okay. So there isn't another angle like after 255. If we try, it will be beyond 360. No, okay. Which is outside the required interval. Okay, so we'll log out and quickly log back. We'll have another set of examples. <laughs> 